Welcome to another episode of Growth Marketers Podcast. I'm Solomon Timothy. And I am Taylor Rowe. Uh, today's episode was uh, definitely fun and exciting for, for us. Very uh, different. Yeah, we, we tried a little bit different format today. Uh, as marketers, we're, we're always you know, tweaking and testing and, of course, taking feedback from our listeners and, and our employees. Uh, and so we took a, an approach today of uh, discussing common misconceptions in, in digital marketing. Uh, with the idea of expectations versus reality. So uh, we jumped into some of the very common uh, expectations that marketers, you know, business owners, CEOs, um, or even, you know, agencies may have, uh, and really what the reality is of the situation, or at least the reality today. So uh, hope you enjoy. All right, let's, uh, let's jump into it. So uh, today we're doing digital marketing expectations versus reality. So uh, kind of jumping into some common misconceptions um, about marketing and a lot of the questions that, that we get asked uh, all the time as, as marketers and as a marketing agency. So uh, we have some questions or I guess some expectations down here and Solomon and I are going to try to address them one by one. So let's get started. All right. So, uh, so here's an expectation. You know, if I'm running a campaign... Uh, I should see immediate results. So. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that is a, an expectation when people get into digital marketing that, um, you know, let's test it out. Let's test the waters. And if I'm spending money, I should be making money, which is, is true. I mean, and you take should. the money <laughs> to spend more. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I think you should always look at marketing that way or, you know, business in that way. Like if you're spending money, there should be a reason behind it. But the reality is, is that you're not going to see the, well, the reality is that you're going to see the absolute worst results right off the bat, right? That should be the worst that your campaign should perform uh, is in the you know first couple of days, weeks, months, uh, because you should always be testing and iterating and improving and optimizing to make your campaigns better. Um, I think maybe this expectation is probably set more around things like paid advertising. So we'll take it, we'll assume that's the case and talk about um, making decisions based on data, not on conjecture, right? right? I think if you're expecting to see, you know, perfect results, uh, your campaigns are going to perform as profitable as possible right off the bat, um, then you're setting yourself up for failure. But if the expectation is to go and to learn about your audience, your messaging, there's so many different variables that come into play when running a campaign um, that if you're not willing to make adjustments and change, um, then you're not really going to see the results you're looking for. I mean, let's just, for those, you know, that are struggling with that thought, because again, I, I agree that you should be able to see results, but what realistic timeline would you give to that person who's struggling there, you know? Sure. Um, I think that varies for everybody in every campaign that you're running, and I know that's a, a blanket statement, but it, it's true because it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If you're trying to sell something, um, to an existing audience, to people who know who you are, uh, maybe it's a little bit faster, right? If you're um, trying to create a new product, service, or you know, category that doesn't exist today, and you need to create awareness and education, and then you need to generate leads, and then you need to nurture Educate those leads, them. right? It's going to take a lot longer. Um, so I, th I think it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I think you should set some, um, you know, micro KPIs or sort of small short-term goals right. um, that lead to your long-term goals. Uh, and judge performance based on that, and then continue to make changes. So I think you should build out maybe, let's say, a 90-day plan of essentially a budget that you're okay with losing. If all if, if everything goes, you know, terrible <laughs> or it just doesn't work out the Even way you expected. Even that's too short-term in my opinion. It is, yeah, but I think you should build that plan out right. and set those micro goals of say, okay, at the end of these 90 days, here's what we're hoping to accomplish. We're hoping to understand what messages resonate with our audience. Right. We're hoping to build up a, a remarketing list based on the, the audience that's showing interest. Uh, we're hoping to generate some top-of-the-funnel leads through you know this, this, or this, or we're, so, we're hoping to grow our email list. I think some setting some short-term goals that lead towards the long-term goals in that shorter time period makes sense. Um, but again, that that's dependent. I mean, I think if you're running, if if a client came to us and says, "Hey, we're you know we're spending right now you know twenty thousand dollars a month on Google AdWords, and right now we're getting a return on our ad spend of three point five. We'd like to get that to four. Um, we could go in there and make changes, and maybe right. we could do that in thirty days. But it, every scenario is a little bit different. So 
I think setting the right expectations and um, understanding what you're getting into, it's definitely not across the board, hey, we're going to see right. results right away. Should it be based on how long it takes for them to you know, get a deal, right? If it takes six months to close a deal, how can you measure your marketing campaigns in increments of weeks and months? Um, yes and no. I mean, I think that's a big factor. And I also think just your own history of marketing. If you've never done any marketing to your audience, um, you have to test and you have to let the data drive the results. Um, you know, you can come up with the best strategy in the world before it gets launched, but ultimately that's just an idea that you or an agency or a marketer had. It's it, There's no way of knowing if that's going to work or not. Well said. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Sure. Uh, here's one. Uh, this is a misconception is social media is, is sort of this magic. You know, if I create this amazing creative, it could be a video, it could be a picture, a meme, whatever it is, it's just going to go viral and, and that's, that's just how it works. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't yeah. know how so many the, things so go viral. So the expectation viral. is that, um, yeah, you just create something that, that goes viral, right? Um, yeah, the reality is that that's a skewed, you know, perspective of right. reality. It, you know, it's not what happens. Well, uh, nothing goes viral every day. You see, you know, you see somebody win the lottery and then you say all you have to do is buy a lottery ticket, right? You're going to win the lottery. But the reality is, is most people lose the lottery. Correct. So it's very similar. I mean, you can't manufacture uh, virality. You can't yes, right. predict what's going to go viral or anything along those lines. Uh, I mean, there's you know marketers and advertisers that spend hours and hours in trying to understand why this you know video of this cat you know jumping off of this chair or whatever went viral. And it's just it's not a it's not a formula, right? There's no way to kind of predict that. It has to be organic. So I wouldn't focus too much on that and if, if that's your expectation with social media again I, I think you're setting yourself up for failure so i would focus more on creating consistent content creating valuable content building your brand over time um people are going to if you're trying to get something that's you know going viral on social whether it's a, a picture or a video or an infographic or whatever and it's going to get shared it has to be valuable and it has to be being viewed by an audience by that's familiar with your brand right so focus on building your brand and building your following uh and then by default, they're going to share, you're going to get more engagement, right? So um, uh, that's the reality of, of social media. It's it's consistency over time. It's providing value. It's developing a plan and a strategy. It, it's not a, you know, let's, you know, buy 100 lottery tickets and hope for the best. And most of the time, what goes viral is more entertaining content. Correct, yeah. <laughs> it's not so much yeah. a, a show and tell right. whiteboard sometimes, video. And the problem is, yeah, sometimes big brands will get lucky with something That's that true. goes viral that might have a you know some sort of a product placement or something like that. It's just you can't predict that. Again, you can't manufacture that. Um, I, I know brands have tried to do that in the past, and it, you can see through it. I mean, it's, it's too right. obvious. And also it's who you share that with in the initial phrase of that video that actually gets it's somebody who's actually have a huge following they share that and all of a sudden it goes viral. well that's Otherwise, the other thing it's yeah just stuck in the internet correct yeah and so that again goes back to the value of who correct. who sees the value in this and you just kind of get lucky with some of that things but uh it's not lucky if if you're consistently trying to provide value and somebody that does see the value has that following like you said of a couple million people and they share it and then correct. you know i guess that's viral right but right. ultimately how does that benefit your business? How many of those people are are actually in the market for whatever you're selling? And I think that's kind of important too. All right, let's uh, let me ask you some. So let, let's go here. Uh, I see the next one is uh, expectation is that uh, oh, this is a good one. Digital marketing doesn't work in my industry. Uh, look, none of my competitors are doing it, right? So none of my competitors are online. Therefore, I don't need to be online. So what's the reality with that? You know, uh, it's this whole school mentality that you know digital marketing was or is for maybe high-tech companies it's for certain types of businesses oh my my doctors and you know whatever dentists might need it but you know we're in this manufacturing sector or whatever it is we produce this really odd product that really nobody cares about and and i can understand that and and at the end of the day you have to realize that those people that are looking for that, they're looking for a lot more than that. Maybe you got to educate the audience that buy that product 
and why you're still relevant and why you're still important, right? Why mm -hmm. maybe you need to innovate in that space before that industry might get disrupted. Maybe the people that are buying the product is, you know, uh, the new age of, you know, individuals might start working on it, right? The new college sure. students are going to get the job and then they're going to Google the product. They want to probably find it for less on eBay or whatever it is. Right. And if you're not out there getting your product, you know, videos created or talking about it or getting, you know, uh, blogs written about why this thing is still relevant and what's the future of the industry, I think you're going to be obsolete. Sure. That's just, that's just the reality of it is. I don't think it's going to be one of those things where um, you're going to be relevant. It, you have a five page website from 1995. Mm -hmm. So is there, are there any industries with that expectation? Are there any, any industries where that's true that digital marketing is just not effective? I, it's, I don't know specifically because, mm. like I said, I, I, I can see, I'm seeing this in every industry where people are benefiting from it. They're all revamping their website. They're all creating content at scale. And even for the most boring industry, you see social media content and you're like, hey, it's possible. Mm -hmm. You could turn anything into something that can be consumed, uh, you know, even a story on Instagram perhaps. But at the end of the day, you have to be creative about how you're going to do that. Even if you were running a manufacturing plant, you can talk about the machinery you have and how it's X mm -hmm. works and how you help save a certain project by creating some unique piece for it. People want to see that. They want to know what's happening behind the scenes. If you want to be a closed door company and not really exposed to the world, what really hap happens behind the scenes? Yeah, I mean, that's just, a, I, I just feel like they're limited in their knowledge of what can be done. And sure. I think they could double their business if they actually see what can be done. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think the reality of that expectation is that there are certain standards for some industries. And if that's how all of your competitors operate, um, then it's possible that your customers may think the same way too, right? So they have a standard of, okay, well, you mentioned manufacturing. So you know, how do I find a manufacturing company? Well, I go to my list of pre-approved vendors and I go through here and I find right. this or I go to a trade show or, you know, if I need something very specific, I can go to a directory like ThomasNet and, and I'll find it, right? Um, but I think that's very short-term thinking, right? Because like you said, the reality is that things change over time. There's, you know, turnover internally right. within companies. Um, you know, the guy that retires that has been there in the procurement department for you know 60 years doesn't no work longer. there anymore and someone right. else has to start over with a new list or whatever or it is they want to revamp just how they Correct. purchase yeah and that's the other thing is that you're only looking at it through the lens of what this is know. how business operates today right. and, and this is how it, you know it, we do this this way because it's the way it's always been done and i think that's um you know that's a big you know issue for a lot of companies in any industry uh, you and in tell. This, yeah, in this case, it just it just talk. We're just talking about digital marketing, but uh, there's. I mean, you could say that about anything they do internally. The process of, you know, there's no better way to to accomplish this because that's how you've always done it. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. So, the reality is, it may not be as short term as some other industries, right? Uh, because they're not selling shoes or hats or whatever online, so yep. you might not see an immediate return. But if you're not constantly thinking creatively about how can Innovating. I improve my process for my customers, which includes, by the way, right. the, the onboarding process of how they find you, how they learn about your company, how they improve and iterate their products and services through whatever you have to offer. So if you're in an industry where it's not as prevalent today, um, but it doesn't I mean, mean if, it's not that's gonna fine, be like right? That if you only wanna be in business for today, then that's, <laughs> that's I fine. Th I think it's the mindset of, Correct. It, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. People have client logins on their website. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you're selling. You can make them see the progress. You can order online. Right. The way we get our coffee, believe it or not, it's from an e-commerce website that I got to go in and do. I'm like, they're selling coffee. This is not complicated. Just right. I should be able to send you an email. Uh, no, they're very, you know, you pay your invoices. I mean, this is amazing. Yeah. How, you know, and I think that has to happen for any company. They have to figure out how do I generate an e-commerce element for my business that could be extremely boring but we want people to be able to find it come see the price the price list right learn mm -hmm. about it watch a video watch a 360 degree of your part that you're selling and 3d you know cat file whatever it's called the, right. you know what i mean right. 
uh, I, I, that's the way that they ought to be thinking their marketing. We do have clients like that that yep. have really changed and download specs and yeah. all kinds of stuff because they know that the, the market is changing and yep. they want to be the leader in it. Right. And by the way, we don't know which direction it's going to go. So that's, yeah, again, that's you have to be flexible and s humans are always going to look for a way to make things easier and more accessible. So even if you're not the company who's innovating and creating this new way of people, how they're going to do business right. with your business, someone else is going to create it. And so sure. if you're not willing to say, to realize that and then say, okay, here's how we can get a piece of that. Or, you know, people are always going to, if you're, if your business or services product, whatever is valuable to somebody, um, and they're wanting to purchase it, there's going to be a platform somewhere where they can find you, where you can market to your customers. And so it's not the same for everybody and you just need to adapt. And again, whatever's happening today is not going to be what's happening tomorrow. So um, you see that happen so much faster with digital than we've seen over the last however many years. And that's why I think, like you said, companies who are maybe a little more old school and in that mindset of digital marketing doesn't work in my industry, it's because they're, that industry, yes, is a late adapter, but once it starts happening, it's, it's going to go fast. a lot faster. Right. Yeah, exactly. Wait till somebody buys up one of the big players and right. they're going to change the game for everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, here's one. SEO is dead. You know, SEO mm -hmm. doesn't work for my industry because for a million different reasons. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, the reality is, is it that's nonsense. Um, you know, the expectation of, you know, SEO is dead. SEO doesn't work anymore. I think that stems from the fact that SEO is evolving. We just talked about, you know, how digital marketing is evolving, uh, you know, every day. Um, if you were someone that was doing SEO 10 years ago or even five years ago, and then you maybe went away for a while or, you know, did something else and came back and tried to do SEO, uh, you would probably say, yeah, SEO doesn't work because all of those tactics and things that you used to do um, don't work anymore because Google is evolving. <clears throat> Google is realizing what people were doing and are doing in order to cheat the system. Right. Uh, and so I think in my mind, that is more of a reason why you need to invest, invest. in the SEO because it's becoming harder and harder to, you can't cheat the system, right? You have to, if you want to show up as the most relevant result to whatever that search is, and you want to prove to somebody that you're the authority, prove to Google that you're the authority, you have to become, it has to be true. You have to be the best at whatever you do, whether that's through the value and the content that you have on your website or getting mentioned on other websites. Um, I think it's just changing, right? So the reality is that as long as people are searching wow. for something that they want, right. whether that's asking Siri or Alexa or maybe in three years or 10 years or whatever, just thinking about it, um, as long as people are searching and there is a search engine or multiple search engines in order to find that result and make a decision or determination, SEO will be relevant. Will right. it be in the same format that it is today? No. Um, but the idea that SEO doesn't work anymore, um, it's because people are not adapting quick enough to understand what needs to be done. Correct. I mean, is people going to stop searching on Google? Yeah, that ain't happening. Correct. And maybe, <laughs> they, maybe they will. Maybe Google... Google won't exist in 10 years. I don't think so. But if they, if it doesn't, there will be something else. There'll be right. the idea of right now, you know, search engine and Google is just synonymous, right? It's like Kleenex and tissue. But uh, again, the reality is Google is a very young company in comparison to some of the other, you know, giants that are out there, right? And you see companies rise and fall all the time. So if if Google's not there, there will be another search engine and there'll be another way to get marketers the information. will need to optimize whatever it is they have, the data they have, the information they have, they need to optimize that so it can be found. Correct. Uh, here's one. Um, we need one message that speaks to our entire audience. So I guess they're, they're thinking about what is that one thing you need to say, no matter what, you know, what mm -hmm. different verticals that they might be focusing on. Sure. How do I come up with this master messaging strategy? I guess that's the right. The expectation. Yeah. Yeah. I think that expectation is kind of set um, by, again, old school marketers. If you were to read a, a marketing textbook that, you know, I remember from when I went to college, um, it was that it was like you have to have a, a brand message, right? You need that one. It was like a tagline, a catchphrase. Right. And like, what is how are you going to sell this and do it all in this, you know, billboard or this, you know, piece of print? 
Um, and the reality is, is that because we have so much more data now and we have so many more channels and ways to specify who we're getting in front of, uh, and, how we're, the funnel. Yeah, and how we're getting in front of them. Yeah. The reality is you need unique messages, uh, for each persona that you're selling to and for each stage of the, the right. funnel that you're talking about. So who are you trying to get in front of and where are they with their decision-making process? And then that experience needs to be unique for, for that individual. Right. So I would, I would almost equate it to, you know, let's say back in the day you wanted to run a commercial and we were going to, we're going to do this to them. We're going to market to the masses, right? And so we try to blanket as many people as we can with the message that makes the most sense. Um, but then you think about when that, let's say it's a retail store, right? When that person comes into the store, you give that person a unique experience based That's on what true. they're looking for, what size they wear, you know, how, I, I hate to say how much money they have, right? right. What, what can they afford? What section are they looking in? You, you kind of, you know, give them that each individual coming into your location has a unique experience uh, and you have multiple stores or locations based on which brands you're selling all those sorts of things so why not combine those two worlds and say okay now i'm going to reach out to each of these individuals and tar you know tailor a message that makes sense for where who they are and where they're at in their overall decision making process and a lot of websites adopt that by instead of list listing just services to solutions mm -hmm. and then they would put different industries like aviation here's how we help your industry and right Correct. Yeah. that helps the person who's coming there for the first time understand hey you know i don't want to waste my time learn everything they sell i just want to know how can you help me right yeah everyone everyone thinks they're unique everyone thinks their business is unique their challenges are unique uh and to some extent they're they're right um people will understand it more it'll resonate more if they can, like you said, you know, if I'm in the aviation space and I can read this all about how this works in the aviation space, um, it's going to be a lot more specific to me. So um, I, I would say that's the reality of, of marketing today is it needs to be hyper focused and that's going to continue to, to get you know, more and more in depth. Correct. All right. So let's see. The next one here is expectation is um, I think that retargeting ads are creepy. So my clients will, too. So I guess the expectation is that, you know, retargeting is, is a creepy practice. So what would you say? Yeah, to that? geez, uh, I, I, I can imagine that person who is seeing an ad from, I don't know, some, you know, event or whatever they went to or even a website. Right. And they see their ad everywhere they go. It's on Facebook. It's on, you know, it could be on Instagram. It could be on weather.com, wherever you go. They're kind of chasing you down. But the at the end of the day is. Uh, from a marketer's perspective, you might have that belief that, you know what, I don't like it. I don't want to do that for my business because that's kind of like I hate when I see ads of other people. Yeah. From a marketer's perspective, we are, you know, we're looking at how do I engage that person who's shown interest in something that they, you know, necessarily didn't purchase. I think it's we're living in a world when you leave a website, you expect them to email you and say, hey, you forgot to check out your $200, whatever it's in your cart, and here's a coupon code. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've genuinely forgot, and then I've gotten that reminder, and right. I'm just like, crap. It's like I, helpful. I did, I did indeed, <laughs> yeah. and Amazon sends you an email very next day, mm -hmm. complete your purchase. I'm like, yeah, 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 so, 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 I, need, I needed that reminder. Mm -hmm. So it's to me, it's just the same way that, you know, when I see the ad again in another platform, I'm like, geez, I, I, I need to go back. And, and learn more about this or buy that or whatever it might be. So uh, the, the, just because you don't like it personally, I don't think it's a, it's a way to build your marketing strategy around mm -hmm. it. You know, you might not like a lot of things, but I think it has to be driven by what works and what the metrics say, what the results that you've seen and how your audience would, you know, it's based on who you're trying to sell to. Sure. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the bigger issue with, with that expectation, uh, like you mentioned, is that it's it's based on your own personal right. belief. Like and that's that's not how marketing works. And so. also, we have ADHD problem mm -hmm. everywhere. People have the lowest of attention span. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to remember the company if you spend so much money on search, get them to the website, and you're not going to have another ad, and they didn't give you even an email address? Seriously, like, mm -hmm. what's the strategy there? So I don't think it's more about being creepy anymore. I think we're becoming uh, more and more used to the fact that you're 
bound to see ads about such and such. And like I said, mm-hmm. Facebook probably show you ad even if you didn't search for it. So. Right. Yeah, I think <laughs> the example you gave is perfect because I think the the user, the consumer, whether you're B two B, B two C, doesn't right. matter. There's a person that was doing that right. research or whatever. I think our expectations are changing where we expect to see those ads. Like you just said, uh, I think maybe it was creepy at one time, um, but again, it, it's creepy because you you didn't know how they were doing it. And now people understand. People understand that Facebook has your data and Google has your data. Uh, everyone has your data, right? Uh, so w- w- why not take advantage of that? It's not. I don't think it's gonna. It's not gonna turn anybody off, right? If it does. It's definitely not turning the masses off because the data shows that retargeting and other, you know, behavioral based targeting platforms are effective. So do you want to run an ad that, you know, you really like or really don't like, or do you want to run an ad that works? And, and that's the reality. All right. You ready for the next one? Let's do it. Um, I will buy top of the line tools and that's all I need. I just need these tools. And whether it's SEO, pay-per-click, social, whatever it is, and my team will just figure it out, and I don't need anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, that's actually a pretty common um, one that I come across is that we live in this like either-or society where it's like, do I do I hire an agency or do I hire a person or do I just buy a tool, right? And I think the expectation is that tools are, you know, so advanced now that they'll tell you every single thing that you need to do and you don't need anything else, right? Uh, tools are great. Um, tools are necessary in digital marketing. I mean, you want to track everything. You want to test. You want to, you know, look at your competitors. You want to set benchmarks and goals. That's all important. I, I don't think you can really effectively run an, an SEO campaign or PPC campaign without, you know, some of those advanced tools. But at the end of the day, they're, they're tools, right? Um, you know, you, you can't buy all the top of the line tools uh, and, you know, expect that you're yeah. going to be, you know, you, you want to remodel your, your kitchen. I, I can't just go buy all the tools and expect that I'm going to be as good as a professional that's doing it. Right. Um, so it's more about the strategy behind how to leverage the information, how to leverage the data and deciding what needs to be done next. Uh, and it's a collaborative effort. I don't think that you can say, um, you know, hey, I just. I bought this tool, and so you know I know everything about SEO now because I have the the most expensive SEO tool that's out there. Uh, I think that's that's the wrong way to look at it. Uh, and also, it's what not to do. <laughs> yeah, you know the tool will tell you all kinds a lot of, of errors. It, yeah, exactly. And yeah. there's some things that you should invest your time in, and there's a lot of things the tool doesn't know about what you're trying to do with your business. Mm-hmm. Maybe in six months, 12 months, you're going to have this huge change that's going to happen in the industry, some yeah. new development, or you're waiting for you know some law to pass so that you can go market something. Mm-hmm. And the tool's not going to tell you that. And also, it ta- it's taking into consideration what your website is today or Correct. what the data is today. Correct. Yeah, it's like you said uh, when we were talking about the you know, digital, the expectation of digital marketing doesn't work in my industry. Uh, we don't know what we don't know. And, and you have to be innovative and creative to read between the lines. And like you said, kind of look at what's coming around the corner, right? So let's use SEO as an example, right? If you wanted to do keyword research based on your website and your competitors, it's going to look at the search volume of existing searches, what people are searching for today, right? It's all past data, right? There's no future data. There's no predictive data. Um, there's no reading in between the lines and saying, okay, your competitor ranks really well for these three or four keywords, um, but nobody is taking this strategy or this approach where they're, you know, taking a piece of this or a piece of that or, you know, taking under search terms and underutilized that's less competitive that ultimately lead up to larger clients, right, because you're getting involved with the company earlier on in the process or through sort of ancillary services right. or products. So it, it's just, it's not enough it doesn't have experience, right? It's it, a tool is is like you said, pointing out errors. It's looking at past behavior and analyzing data, uh, but it's not able to make inferences or uh, you know creative strategies, at least not yet. Um, so I think it's not a do I buy this tool or do I hire an agency or is it you know do I hire three people in house or do I buy this tool instead? Maybe the costs in some of those things are are priced accordingly where it's like you know i can only afford one or the other but in reality to be effective you need a team to manage whatever data the tool is pointing to yep 
Absolutely. All right. All right. So next expectation we have here is uh, the expectation is that the agency is the expert um, and they will do all of the strategy and the workload. So expectation is, you know, hiring an agency is a one-stop sh- shop. It's a solution to solve all of your needs. Right. You know, it, 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 it makes sense. I'd like that, you know, you could totally, um, you know, hand over your business to an agency and they're just going to magically make your business better. But the fact of the matter is you have to give them all the pieces, all the data that they don't know about your business, right? They're not going to come in knowing everything about your business. So basically, the more you collaborate, the more you, you know, if the agency can come on site, learn about your business, your process, you know, vary your vest. I'm just making this up Mm -hmm. (laughs) and get inside, put the gloves on and do some of the stuff that you do on a daily basis. And you tell them how this fits into the client's life and whoever, you know, uh, you're selling to at the end of the day. They're going to have a much better idea of how to market your company than yeah. you say, hey, I've hired the best in the class. They know what they're doing, and they're in Minneapolis. I'm just making this up, right? right? And they're just going to – and guess what? 12 months goes by, and you don't see any difference in your bottom line that that you thought it was going to be different. So yeah. collaboration, yeah, I guess, it's, it is the, is the biggest key. You can't outsource and then just completely forget about it a lot of times. Um, if you collaborate, if you give them more insight into the industry where it's headed, the value that they can bring to the table is a lot more. How can they know the ins and out of your business if you're not going to give them? And, and, and equivalently, the agency has to give so much more time into learning one's business mm-hmm. if you truly want to be the partner. Sure. Right. You can't. There's there's instances where the client's willing to do it, but the agency does just doesn't want to do it. Yeah. So, so let's dive into this a little more because that is something that it comes up a lot uh, and you get the questions of, you know, uh, I feel like my agency isn't coming to me with ideas. I'm coming to them with ideas. I don't think they understand what we do or they don't know my, you know, industry ins and outs, this and that. Um, and so that's a frustration of, of companies. But at the same time, they are, the reason they're frustrated is because they are expecting that I'm hiring you. You are the professional. You know everything there is about digital marketing. Therefore, you can sell my product or service because you're a digital marketer. So, if that's not the case, why would somebody hire an agency to help? So, first of all, they probably are the experts. Don't get me wrong. Mm. It's you know digital marketing. You can learn and get you know the, the 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 years and years behind it and try to run all these campaigns and get the knowledge behind it. But what they are lacking is what. How does that relate to your business and what can be marketed? What's competitive? What's not competitive? So you got to give that part from your side, Mm -hmm. right? Only you know because you're the subject matter expert in your business. Mm -hmm. You have years and decades or whatever many years of doing what you do. And it is a collaboration at the end of the day. They have only half the answer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I guess that's what I'm trying to say. The other half is in your hands. While they're an expert, you're right they're not going to know the ins and out of how you're right. How you differentiate yourself from all the competitors. Sure. Yeah. And conversely, uh, you know, theoretically hiring somebody internally or trying to do it internally because you are the expert. Um, you're also, again, you don't know as much about the digital marketing piece. Right. Right. So I think, yeah, the collaboration and the communication of, I think it's both the agencies duty to educate their client on what they know and what they've been able to do for other clients so that the client can try to understand how that can apply to their business right so if i explain to you okay here's how we typically handle this situation we you know do this and do that and do that and then you could say okay well you know we have a product like that that we could sell or we could do this or here's how our sales process works right so it is a collaboration and i think far too often I see agencies get into this position of, okay, they're hiring you to be the consultant or to be the agency. So they're expecting from day one, you're the expert. So you can't ask any questions to the client that would uh, right. make it seem like you don't know what you're doing. Right. And so you ask a question three weeks into the campaign or three months into the campaign that you should have covered before. And so it's just like things go un unspoken and, and things, um, you know, kind of get swept under the, the rug right. a little right. bit because, Everyone is, you know, I'm expecting you to come to me with ideas. You're expecting me to come with ideas. So it's more of a communication problem. Um, and it's those expectations, again, that are not really set uh, when the reality is it shouldn't matter whose idea it was, 
uh, it's it's you you should be hiring a team when you're hiring an agency right. to extend and accelerate your process, right? So extend your team and acceler- accelerate your progress or your process in order to get the results that you're looking for, not to, okay, I hired you, let's and break, come back in six months and see what you did. And also, and in, in let's just use that expert marketer, their, their job is changing by day. So their job is to bring you what is the latest capabilities right. of the platforms and what can be done, how they should be you know, changing their business, uh, from a marketing perspective, not so much, you know, anything else. I think you got to leave the marketing up to the marketer and the process of the business from the business owner to the agency or the freelancer or whoever it is, the consultant to be able to, to get you where you're trying to go. Sure. Uh, I got one for you. Okay. Uh, you know, this marketing thing is a lot of work up front. Okay. And once you do all that, it's on autopilot. You don't, you don't really have to change anything, tweak anything. It's pretty straightforward, but it's going to take maybe a month, two, maybe three months to set it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know where that, um, where that expectation comes from, but it, it is common. Uh, you know, people just assume that because there's a lot of work up front, then it's going to get easier. And it's true that there is a lot of work up front. Uh, but that doesn't mean that, you know, once you, I hear uh, people ask all the time, you know, well, once you SEO the website, then what happens, right? And Nothing. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> SEO, yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> SEO is not a, it's not, that's, it's not a, a one-time thing. It's not how it works. It's a continuous optimization of your website, improvement of your website, and your search engine visibility, right? It's, it's not uh, a switch that you flip on, and, and it's same with the rest of digital marketing channels. So, there is a lot of work to get up and running, especially if you've never invested into digital marketing before. You've never created any of these accounts. You never set up the tracking. You never, you know, built the ads. You've never created content, a blog, all these kind of things. So the strategy, the research, the campaign development, implementation of tracking and tools, all of that is a lot of work. Then that's just the baseline. So if you're not continuing to push and test and iterate and improve the campaigns over time. Uh, look at the data and make changes, just like we were talking about earlier of, you know, when should I see results? Um, the work is never done. So the expectation that, you know, just do the work up front and then it gets easier. The reality is the work gets different. So whatever you did at the beginning, you might not have to redo that, but there's a lot more that needs to be done or at least should be done if you want to continue to grow as a business. And you can also add on stuff. Right. If you were doing yep. organic and you were doing paid and you're doing paid and you're organic, you can do video content. You could right. You can add on different levels right. of stuff to make it more robust. Right. Well, it's just like we were talking. I mean, you know, about let's just say SEO is one piece of that whole marketing puzzle. puzzle. Um, SEO changes every day. Uh, and there's new search engines when you look at, you know, things like YouTube and right. Google and the way Google displays the results is completely changing, which means you need to have new types of content that people are going to um, sort of review. It's, you know, maybe it's not as much about the content that's written out as much as, you know, video content and, you know, podcasts, audio content, all those sorts of things, images, infographics, interactive, you know, yeah, tools and quizzes. All, quizzes, all those kind of things. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it morphs and evolves and it changes, but uh, it definitely doesn't get, you know, easier or less work. Um, I think that's the idea of digital marketing because it's um, mo- like it's more intangible and that, you know, it, it seems easier or cheaper. Right. And so it's like, well, we'll do the work up front and then we'll sit back and we'll just, you know, right. go walk to the mailbox and collect our check. But that's that's not how it works. There's so much that you can continue to do to improve and also try different things and see if it resonates. Who knows? There could be that one quiz that you ran. Apparently, it's like the hit. And yeah. I've seen that. The most visited page is this quiz. Right. You're like, and it's wow, like if frustrating. you didn't have that yeah. quiz, what would you do? Exactly. And that's the whole idea that goes back to the expectation of creating something that's viral. It's like, could have created thousands of pieces of content over the last, you know, five, ten years. And then the one you know, random thing. quiz right. that you don't even remember whose idea it was that you created, you know, got millions of hits and conversions and, you know, awareness for your brand. And it's like, you can't predict that. You can only you know, research and plan and put your head down and do the work right. and then look at the data and then make changes and adjustments. Boy, this is a fun episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, these are these are all, I think, you know, common expectations that, you know, whether they're common or not, I mean, they're, they're out there and I get asked these right. questions all the time. And so I think just elaborating on, on some of these items, um, 
you know, will be helpful for everyone listening. Um, so the next one is, uh, I think, a very common one that, that I see in, in kind of here, similar to, you know, how we were talking about it doesn't work in my industry or I can't do this or I can't do that. Uh, I think a common theme here is, you know, there's a lot of excuses out there, right? right. So maybe That's it's, true. you know, excuses versus reality here. But the expectation of uh, I cannot compete with my competitors uh, on AdWords, right? So um, like you, hear, you hear this a lot from, you know, let's say insurance company or um, some of the other expensive ones like attorneys and those sorts of things, even small businesses, restaurants, you know, real estate agent, right? I can't compete with Zillow on AdWords. They're spending millions of dollars, right? I'm, you know, I'm a small insurance broker. I can't compete with, you know, State Farm or I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, a divorce attorney in New York City and my competitor spends, you know, $50,000 a month. Um, What is the reality of that situation? Is that true that you know, expectation of I have to spend as much or more than my competitor to be to, successful. To be right? successful, yeah. First of all, and a lot of folks are afraid of ads. Google Ads is like scares the crap out of them because you know they just feel like, wow, every click is going to cost me so much money, and all my competitors click on it, and all these things sort of scare them. And you know, first of all, you don't pay for you know the clicks that you didn't get. You only pay for the clicks that you got at the end of the day, and you can tighten up your campaign to be in a in a very very tight niche so only the keywords that you want to show up for and it could be exact match so if they don't punch in the exact same way your ads won't show you can you know uh you know date part it so mm-hmm. it doesn't show up if you're not in the office and unable to answer the questions you may not want to run ads on saturdays and sundays mm-hmm. right so you can tighten up that campaign with a lot of negative keywords and whatever else that you want to do to make sure that you don't lose money on clicks that you don't right, sure. get. Whereas the competitors might be running a lot of face match, a lot of broad match because they just have a much bigger marketing budget. So you are able to compete on a much smaller uh, level and still get results. You yep. don't have to have more money than your competition. This isn't like my competition has five billboards. I need 10. Or else, you know, no one's gonna know. Correct. Me. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a competition in that sense that their success is your failure. And I think people they look at that so many times, like I can't compete with them because they, you know, it's not a it's not a poker game, right? Where they're putting they're putting all their all chips, chips in. You got to match up all their chips, and then whoever <laughs> wins takes the chips. That that's not how it works. I mean, there is, of course, a certain market share that's out there available, sort of addressable market, um, but increasing your market share or increasing and inc- by incremental pieces and in growing your own business does not mean their business is failing and, and vice right. versa right so uh like you said you only pay for the clicks that you get if you're talking about google even AdWords. if your competitors clicked google will right. get you the money back if they continue to click on it right yeah. the invalid clicks there's yeah, a lot those of those are, yeah, misconceptions yeah i think, yeah, I think those have. are yeah so so one thing you could do is you can do a better job post click than your competitor make better landing page experience, add more value by putting them on some kind of an email drip that, you know, continues to answer their questions even when they don't have it and much better customer service experience. Mm-hmm. You can add video, con- you can do all kinds of stuff to make that one click that you got way better than what your competitors might be doing. And you're still going to yield positive ROI because you're just doing a better job at a much smaller scale. Sure. And uh, let's let's unpack that a little bit when we talk about um, you know, AdWords. So let's look at just on the micro scale. Let's say I'm a, a local plumber, right? And maybe there's a national, you know, franchise or plumber or something in my area that's spending tens of thousands of dollars a month. And I look at this and I say, okay, like you said, Google AdWords is expensive. My competitors are spending a lot of money. I can't compete with them, right? So what you're saying is that the reality is you, AdWords, the way AdWords works is, is an auction, right? And so Yes, you are competing with them on that level of I have to pay for this click. But again, you only pay for the clicks that you get. So there's a lot of searches happening throughout the course of the day. Uh, you would set a budget for a particular portion of the day, whatever makes sense for you. And then um, you have the opportunity to show up in you know, top three positions there, essentially, as long as your strategy is you know, correct and execution is uh, correct. Uh, and essentially, you would get some clicks during that time of the day where your your ads were showing, when people were searching for whatever you're, you're bidding on. Um, and so you generate those leads, you turn them into business, you do a good job, you get referrals. So you, there is a, a way that you can grow 
by just taking a small percentage of that where you don't have to show up every single time people search. And I know that's something that um, companies will, will be frustrated with as well is that, you know, I'm spending money on AdWords. Well, when I type in and I search, I don't see my ad, right? I want to show up every single time. And, you know, again, do you want to do what works and what's successful and what's profitable? Or do you want to do something that, you know, you ha I'm not going to try unless I can be the best, right? I want to be the absolute right. best or I'm not going to do it. Uh, in reality, like you said, there's other strategies you can implement in terms of what you're bidding on, how much you're spending, what time of the day you're bidding, uh, demographic targeting of who you want to bid on, and you know all those sorts of things where I would almost look at it as an advantage of, look, I have to be crafty and unique with my strategy, uh, whereas you know these companies have big budgets, they're spending money all over the place, and they have so right. many different things going on that they don't have the time and attention that I have to spend optimizing this campaign. So... Use that to your advantage. Um, you know, if, if think if that's a mindset that you have going into anything in life, right? I can't do it because someone else is <laughs> doing better, better than me. Um, and you know, it's win. not a recipe for success. Yeah. Are you ready for the next one? All right, let's do it. Hey, all I need is a website, and I'll just build a website, and that's it. They'll come. The traffic will be there. I just like my website is all that's lacking in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that that is the expectation for a lot of businesses, and I'm hoping that it's shifting and changing. But uh, the expectation of you know, a website is digital. Yeah, marketing. put up my pictures uh, yeah. of my portfolio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's it. Yeah, put, put all the jobs I've done, and, <laughs> and people are just gonna call Correct. me. Correct. Yeah. Um, so that whole idea, you know, feel the dreams. If you build it, they will come. Uh, the reality is, is they will not. They will absolutely not. Um, the reality is, if people cannot find your website. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of website you have. They're not going to look at your portfolio, all these sorts right. of things. I mean, yes, um, in theory, you can market better to your existing customers, provide them a better experience. They can, you know, referrals and you know, people that you're talking to throughout the sales process, they'll have basically a brochure that they can look at. That's all essentially that's a digital brochure. If you have the mindset of I'll just put up a website and now I'm doing digital marketing, right? right. The reality is for most businesses, you need a strategy around driving relevant traffic to that website and a conversion strategy on the website that provides a great user experience that moves them along in the sales process. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's it's the reality the of the situation is that a website without is, an engine. A website is a crucial piece of, of your marketing strategy, but it is not a marketing strategy. Uh, so how about this one? Okay, so I got my website. So mm -hmm. if I get more uh, traffic, I should get more conversions. In in you know, if it's two percent, you know, ten thousand visits, I'll get two percent leads. But if I had a million, mm -hmm. I should get two percent of that, and my business is going to be drastically different. A mm -hmm. linear sort of conversion rate. Sure. Um, yeah, I think that expectation of you know more traffic equals more conversions is. Um, I guess misguided is probably the best way to look at it. Um, when you look at what you're trying to accomplish, you have to kind of look at where the traffic is coming from, what type of traffic it is. Um, right. And the reality is, as you mentioned, if you have a website today that gets 100 visitors and has a 10% conversion rate, uh, then you say, okay, all I need is 1,000 visitors or you know, 10,000 visitors or 20,000 visitors because I've already had the conversion rate figured out. It's 10%. It's higher than all my competitors. Uh, the reality is it's not, a, it's not a linear growth chart and in terms of the traffic and conversions, and it's not a linear conversion path, uh, and it's not a, a linear sales process. Nothing about it is linear, right? right? Because of the intent of the traffic. Um, or how it, they got there. Exactly. That's what I mean by the, the intent of the traffic. If you say, okay, Right now, I only have 100 visitors, but my conversion rate is 50%. Right. Okay, well, probably because the, those 100 visitors are coming from your salespeople who are already nurturing. They are already have already educated them. They've already you know nurtured them, explained to them. They're just going to your website to confirm their you know decision or convert in terms of a sale or whatever that is. So in theory, if you have only people finding your website that are either very bottom of the funnel or searching for your brand name because they already know who you are, your conversion rate is going to be much higher. If you have a lot of top of the funnel traffic or you have irrelevant traffic coming from, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, content discovery network or something like that, um, you're getting, you know, cheap clicks on, you know, Instagram or Facebook or, you know, Pinterest or whatever it is. 
um, the traffic might not convert as high. So is that traffic less valuable, more valuable? I mean, I, I think that's a separate conversation, but um, that expectation of all I need is more traffic, throw more fuel in the fire. The reality is you need a, a real strategy behind that. You need to look at what kind of traffic it is, how they're getting there, what is their intent of what they're looking for once they're on the site. Um, and again, it's not a linear path. So you need to have multiple conversion points based on where they're at, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, and then you need to nurture them throughout the process by multiple means and multiple channels. Um, sounds good. I agree. All right. So, um, oh, this is a, a good one here. So the expectation is if I work with a local company, I will have better results, right? So wow. The a idea local thing. Yeah, 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 it's a big deal. A yeah. lot of people, like you said, it's the mindset that I, my insurance agent, you know, it's driving distance, my realtor, my lawyer, I can call my dentist anytime. It's on my way home. Mm -hmm. So show, so should my marketer be. Sure. Right? It sounds like a great idea. Um, fact of the matter is, uh, how do you know the best marketer that you need to take your business from where you are to whatever fold you're trying to be, 5X, yeah. 7X, 10X? How can you know that the kind of marketing that you need done that's probably way better than your competitors is right down the street from you? What are the odds, right? So um, if you're, you know, if you're in a big town, perhaps you can find someone uh, that is, you know, qualified to be able to help you. But if local, right, knowledge is really, really, really important. Let's say you're a local business, you only sell to regional customers, mm -hmm. of whatever kind it is. And that local knowledge is really important because of the fact that you're in, you're in that local space mm -hmm. over the experience and the expertise of the person and how to help you. If that local part, hey, the neighborhoods or whatever it is, right, the population or how people behave, whatever else, if it's more important than the expertise, yeah, probably you should find someone that's local if you feel more comfortable with that. But in the world of internet where we're doing things, you know, with clients internationally. We're not, mm -hmm. right? We we never saw them even face to face, perhaps, and we're able to drive growth remotely. The expertise, I think, outweighs that local part. Sure, you know, and they they come to you for who you are, not so much uh, where you're located. Mm -hmm. So, would you say there are scenarios where it does make sense that yes? I need I, my campaigns will be more successful because you need somebody in the tri city and mm -hmm. they have to have this background and they need to go to sales calls with me or hype, right. whatever it might be that yeah. that part is so important. They need to come in five times a week. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, maybe it's it makes sense. But if truly what they're looking at, it's the numbers, like you said, the analytics and our campaigns over the competitors trying to drive lower cost per lead, trying to get you a better, robust marketing automation system in place that's going to you know help you in the next 10 years uh, you might not find that person they might not even exist in the same state sure not even in the same coast yeah no <laughs> I, I completely agree with that i think um it's almost like uh, if you had a chart like you said of like technical expertise or strategic expertise digital marketing knowledge and then on the other side was like local knowledge and if you know if the intricacies of your local market are a critical success factor to the campaigns to the extent that uh, I, I, I would rather have somebody who knows every single thing about this local market than knows anything about digital marketing. Like if it's that heavily weighed, um, then yeah, I, I definitely think you should go with that right. local person or local company. But like you said, the reality is, especially if you're in a, a smaller town, a smaller population, the reality is there. what are the odds that the best person for the job you know, lives two doors down or whatever. I mean, the reality is, is that you need to find the best company, organization, person, hire, whatever, uh, for the job based on a number of different factors. Uh, and typically, location is not one of them, at least not at the top. And even if you did find one, how often do you meet with that person? Yeah, and that's, <laughs> you know, that's the sad reality is that, um, you know, we have a lot of you know local clients a lot of agencies have a lot of lo local clients and the reality is everyone is is busy right so it takes a lot of coordination to get you know leaders of multiple different companies into the same room on a consistent basis Correct. uh and for that level of coordination uh you know a flight or a uh, a video call is 
so not much usually out of the question. Right. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. So we got a. I think we got a. You know, we've been in, been doing this for almost an hour here. So let's kind of rapid fire through through some of these. I think sure. you have a couple more for me. I Go got. Uh, all I'm missing is SEO, right? If I had more SEO, because they've already made up their mind that SEO is the thing that that's missing. Sure. And that's it. Yeah. Um, again, it's uh, there's no silver bullet, right? So. Um, that expectation of all I'm missing is SEO uh, to me tells me that you think all you're missing is driving more organic traffic uh, and that there's nothing else, no other issues with your website from a technical standpoint, from a conversion standpoint, all of your other channels are working perfectly. All you need to do is drive, uh, you know, an incremental amount of more organic traffic. Um, it, it may be true. Um, but again, you know, what does that mean to you? All I need is SEO. I, I think there's a difference between somebody rewriting all of your title tags and meta descriptions versus somebody getting to know your business, looking at your website and your marketing Version strategy model. from a, right. yeah, from a, a, a comprehensive perspective, looking at the sales process or decision-making process of your company coming up with a unique strategy. So it's possible um, that, that that is all you're missing, but I think uh, the reality is you're you're most likely self-diagnosing and not seeing the bigger picture. How about I only post on one social platform because you know that's the one that I know my audience is at. Uh, clearly, they're not on Facebook. Sure. <laughs> um, the reality is um, that's ridiculous. So <laughs> let's move on. No, um, the reality is is that your audience is on. Every platform. Almost every platform, yeah. And if if you don't have the data to, to support that on your specific audience, I mean, there's research out there, but um, you want to look at what's available today in terms of platforms and what's available, what's coming around the corner, what's the new hottest trend, uh, anywhere where uh, your consumers have the ability to, you know, see, view your content or, you know, read, uh, listen, you know, whatever, watch. Any of those, any any platform, whatever it is, it doesn't matter if that's a you know B two B platform, B two C, whatever. If you can get in front of your target audience and talk about the value of your product or service, um, then you need to do it. So, um, just focusing and hyper focusing on one specific uh, platform is not the best strategy. I mean, um, platforms you know come and go, come and go every every day. Uh, we've been in business for. 150 years <laughs> sure <laughs> without google thank you very much and we'll just keep doing what we what we know because we we're the pioneers in this industry mm -hmm. they already know our company sure um the reality is is that um that may be true today again but um most likely will not be true tomorrow i mean uh, i think it's very short-sighted it's not looking at what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> uh I, I mean yeah the expectation of hey i we do it this way because that's the way it's always been done. And because we're the only one that does it in our space uh, and we're the best at it, people will, will come to us for whatever it is, the product or service. The reality is, is there is always somebody out there that's, you know, Why trying to eat your lunch. Still yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, there's companies like that. I mean, you look at giant companies, Blockbuster, Sears, right. all those type of companies. I mean, there, what I mean, do you think Blockbuster was worried about family video? They weren't worried. They said, hey, we don't need to do anything else because the only other competitor is family video, and they do the, they have the same business model. They're going to come in. Everyone's going to come in, whatever's closest to their location. Um, you know, we have agreements, and we're not going to put a Blockbuster and family video right next to each other. So there's nothing to worry about. We just open more locations, and more location equals more sales because each location does this, this, and this, and whatever. We already have agreements with all the major you know, film networks and all that kind of stuff, right? We all know what happened with that, Netflix, all those sorts of things. I mean, you, you can't say that this is how business works, this is how my industry works, and forget about the consumer. Whatever, whoever's buying your product, whoever, if someone is out there and create a better way, a more valuable way to service your customer, uh, it's going to win out. And, um, and someone's going to try to beat them too. So it's a never-ending, you know, vicious cycle, right? And so I think that... The idea that this is just the way it's done, um, again, is very, very short-sighted. All right, so next one here is uh, expectation of Google is free. Why would I pay for it? So I think the expectation there is, you know, hey, you don't have to pay for Google. Uh, Google is smart. Uh, Google has, you know, scientists and engineers and developers building a platform that shows me the results that I'm looking for. So why would I pay you to help 
optimize for it. I don't need to. Google's smart enough, and uh, it's free at the end of the day. And and Google in, indeed is free. They don't need any of our money <laughs> at the sure. end of the day for. But what they do want to make sure is, you know, they're gonna ha- they, their business is ninety some percent is ads, right? And right. It's the only product they have that's successful is Google Ads. Yeah, I think that's the more. important reality is that literally. Like you said, of Google, I mean, I think it's 94% of their business. I mean, billions and billions and billions of dollars is coming from ads from their search engine or right. other search products. So, um, but yeah, we're talking about organic traffic. So Correct. what's the reality of So of that? you're not going to show up just because as a consumer, you don't pay. The businesses are taking the hit in making the search engine free for everybody to use. So if you want to get a piece of that action, get that traffic, whether it's paid or organic, both it's going to take a lot of time and effort, right? It's the same thing kind of like, why should I be using social media? I thought social media was for celebrities. Mm -hmm. They're the only people that tend to be taking pictures of themselves and posting it and everybody else sort of follows. Well, it's, it's the same sort of thing. You and your business, yourself, whatever you too can create value and right. Have engagement and, you know, create something out of it or just, you know, think that it's just going to solve and, and do itself. But, you got to take an an action you have to continue to execute google is free to search and use because we're all clicking on the ads and we're all worth millions of dollars to them individually we're worth millions of dollars to google Mm -hmm. they'll continue to make more and more free products until the world ends right it'll create more and more things it'll probably deliver groceries for free too because they'll know where you live and Mm -hmm. what do you eat so they can sell you more products at the end of the day so um, but as a business, you have to figure out how do I monetize this thing that's out there where people are searching and how do I use that to grow my business? And that's not free. Yeah. So in reality, because it's free is exactly why you should pay somebody to market on the platform because all the users are gravitating right. towards there because it's free to use, right? It's, uh, it's free for the, the user, but um, you know, nothing is free, right? It comes at the expense of somebody. And so in this case, it's uh, the advertisers, uh, but with the expectation that you're going right. to receive more value in return. How about, I like this one a lot, because email marketing is, uh, you know, got a lot of spam. So mm-hmm. we get a lot of spam emails, so we don't want to do email marketing. Sure. Um, yeah, I think the reality is that two things. I mean, I think... The word spam, right, is kind of, Scary. you know, people, you know, I don't want to be spam. I'm going to mark this as spam. This is spam, 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 spam. Um, the reality is, I mean, what are you doing? If you're spamming people, then you're spamming people. But if you are marketing to people who have shown an interest in your product or service and providing value to them and explaining to them what they need to do next in the sales process, if they'd like to become a customer or showing them the value of uh, what you've done for other, you know, companies, employees, uh, whatever it is that your product or service is selling, um, then you're not really marketing to them. You're definitely not spamming to them. You're helping them. And I think if you approach marketing that way, especially email marketing of, okay, here's what we know about this individual or this company. Here's how they came in, which we can assume that they were in this particular part of the process. Um, what information would be valuable to them? What, what, what point you know, in their decision-making process would they be looking for this type of information or um, how can we assist them in making a decision one way or the other, moving, gravitating towards uh, making a decision, a purchase decision with our company and providing that roadmap. And email is just uh, the vehicle that, that allows you to make that happen. So, um, of course, if you're you know downloading a list of you know companies in a particular industry or you're scraping a list of emails and just blasting out emails that are not personalized and are not valuable, uh, that people have not consented to, um, I, I wouldn't recommend that, not just in terms of, yeah, you don't want to spam people, but you're also going to waste your time. It's not going to be effective. So right. just providing as much value as possible and mapping that all out, um, then that's not a, you know, it's not a spam strategy, right? That's a, a marketing strategy that makes sense for your business. Yeah, that uh, that's about wraps it up um, on this episode of Digital Marketing Expectations misconceptions versus reality sure yeah and i think a lot of people will have more um that, that we'll probably want to cover so uh how can they get a hold of us okay you know the best way to do it is just email us at growth marketers at one ims.com and thank you for those that have been emailing and just kind of giving us some feedback on it and that's that's why we're 
you know, changing things up and, and want to make it a value add for you at the end of the day, wherever you might be listening. So uh, thank you for those that are tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time.